In this video, we're going to discuss structural factors that affect the strength of simple acids. In particular, we're going to focus on two factors at the beginning of this video, the strength and the polarity of the HA bond. Now, acid dissociation ultimately amounts to the cleavage of the HA bond, and we can see that if we write a chemical equation for acid dissociation. We end up with A minus in which the A group has picked up an additional lone pair, both electrons, from the HA bond, and we've also formed H3O plus via the transfer of a proton from HA to water. So we can see that, indeed, the HA bond does break in the course of this process. So it makes sense that the strength of the bond would play into the position of this equilibrium and the strength of the acid. However, the polarity of the HA bond is also really important to consider because this is what we call heterolytic cleavage, meaning that both electrons of the HA bond end up with one of the two groups involved in the bond, in this case A. So how polarized the HA bond is in terms of the amount of positive charge on the H atom and the amount of negative charge on the A group is going to dictate how easily this can fall apart into A- minus and H3O+. Focusing first on bond strength, what we can say in general is that the weaker the bond, in other words, the lower its strength, or the lower its bond enthalpy, the stronger the acid. This works especially well for binary acids, and especially the hydrohalic acids, in which X is a halogen atom. For binary acids within the same group, the weaker the HA bond, the stronger the acid. Keep in mind that when we talk about binary acids in the same group, we're talking about acids whose A groups are associated with the same column of the periodic table. So for example, the halogens F, Cl, Br, and I are all within the same group, and we can ask about the acidity of Hx as a function of the atom within the group that's sitting in the X position. If we look at the trend here, we can notice that as the HA bond strength increases, from right to left, the acid strength decreases. So the weakest acid, HF, is associated with the strongest bond strength. That is the highest bond enthalpy. It takes the most energy to pull apart H and F. On the other side of the scale, we have HI, which takes the smallest amount of energy to pull apart the two atoms. It's got the lowest bond enthalpy. That's the weakest HA bond, but it's the strongest acid of the group. So there's an inverse correlation here. The weaker the HA bond, the stronger the acid. For binary acids in the same row, that is, the same period of the periodic table, we need to focus our attention on the polarity of the HA bond, and in particular, how polarized is the bond? How much negative charge is there on this A group or this X atom, and how much positive charge is there on the H atom? Rather than worrying about the exact numbers, we can focus instead on the electronegativity of the A atom. The more electronegative the A atom, the more partial negative charge we'll have on that atom within HA. This ultimately makes the acid stronger because a base is going to be more attracted to the greater partial positive charge that results from having more partial negative charge on the A atom. So we can look, for example, at the second period, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine, and see that as we move from less electronegative A to more electronegative A, we get a much more polarized HA bond. In CH4, we see almost a perfect balance. If we focus especially, for example, on this region of this electrostatic potential map, it looks basically uniformly green. It's hard to tell a difference here. These bonds really aren't polarized at all. When we get to NH3, on the other hand, there's much more of a polarization effect going on here where near the nitrogen atom we have significant partial negative charge that's represented by the red cloud there, while the hydrogens are associated with partial positive charge, and that's where we see the blue cloud. And the effect only increases as we move to the more electronegative oxygen, and finally the most electronegative in this series, the fluorine, which has the greatest partial positive charge on the hydrogen atom. HF is the strongest acid here because of that large partial positive charge ultimately traceable back to the electronegativity of the fluorine atom. And the weakest acid is CH4 
because the CH bond is essentially nonpolar, and the hydrogen has very little, if any, partial positive charge on it. You can summarize these ideas by looking at the periodic trends. As we move from left to right across the periodic table, for binary acids, acid strength increases. This is because the electronegativity of the A atom increases as we move from left to right, and this is a trend that we've seen before. As we move down the periodic table, acid strength also increases, and we can ultimately trace this back to a weakening of the HA bond. The HA bond strength of the bond enthalpy decreases as we move down the periodic table. That means acids near the bottom are going to be the strongest, at least within a group. A particular class of acids to which we can apply these ideas are the oxo acids, which have the general formula HNYOM, where Y is a central atom, a non-metal typically like chlorine, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, sulfur, etc. And N and M are integers and tell us the number of hydrogens and oxygens within a molecule. So examples are shown here, carbonic acid, nitric acid, hypochlorous acid, sulfuric acid, so on and so forth. If we think about the acidity of an oxo acid, all oxo acids contain an acidic OH bond. So any factor that weakens this bond increases the strength of the oxo acid. There are two factors to consider here. The first is the electronegativity of the central Y atom. Just like we saw for the binary acids, the more electronegative the greater the polarization of bonds within the molecule. And even though the OH bond doesn't involve that Y atom directly, the pulling effect caused by the large electronegativity of that central atom does have an influence on the acidity of the peripheral OH bonds. So even though Y is not directly connected to the acidic hydrogen as it is in the binary acids, even in this case we can say that the more electronegative that central Y atom is, the stronger the acid. Other electronegative atoms within the oxoacid structure also influence the acidity of oxoacids, and in particular, the oxygen atoms bonded to Y and the number of such oxygen atoms are going to influence the acidity. To understand this trend, we need only recognize that these oxygen atoms are themselves electronegative and will pull electron density towards themselves. This robs the hydrogen atoms of electron density and makes them more partially positive, so for a similar idea to the electronegativity of Y, more oxygens leads to a stronger acid. More oxygens means more partial negative charge on those oxygens and more partial positive charge on the hydrogens, making them more susceptible to removal by a base. Just to show you a couple of examples of this, for the oxoacids containing one oxygen atom, HOY, we can see that the electronegativity of the Y atom plays an important role in the acid strength. The most acidic HOY oxoacid has the most electronegative Y atom, it's HOCl. The least electronegative Y atom, the iodine, is associated with the weakest acid. In this bottom example, we can see that the number of oxygen atoms also plays a role in the acid strength. The strongest acid, perchloric acid, which actually shows up on our list of quote unquote strong acids which dissociate completely contains four oxygen atoms bonded to the chlorine. Chloric acid is a fairly strong acid, not as strong as perchloric, but somewhere in the middle, and it has three. Chlorous acid is slightly weaker with two oxygen atoms, and hypochlorous acid is the weakest of them all, and it has only one oxygen atom. 